Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. You know when it comes time to mount a ceiling fan box in your home, it's gotta be done right and securely. Fortunately, there's some great hardware and techniques out there that'll help you accomplish that task. Stay tuned. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. If you're like us, you really enjoy having those ceiling fans. They really help keep the air moving around in the home, uh, make the home feel cooler, or when they're reversed, you can actually, in the winter, mix up the air a little bit better so you don't have so much stratification of warm air at the top of the room and cold at the bottom. So they're great devices, but they depend pun intended, heavily on the right mounting hardware, the right box in the ceiling. We're gonna walk you through some of the hardware that's available and using this mock-up. Now, if you look at this mock-up, please, you gotta go along with me and suspend reality just a little bit. It's like the world's upside down. We're looking at the bottom side of your ceiling where there's either what's called a joist, a rafter, or a truss bottom cord that is right above the sheetrock. So we're looking at the underside or up towards the sky here, and this side is towards the room, so the world's upside down here. But this allows us to see everything clearly. So when a place is being constructed, and we'll show you in a moment how to work with existing construction also, you're wanting to mount some kind of box like this that is rated for ceiling fan uh, weight and and vibration and that sort of thing. Well, how do you mount that on there? If you mount this on top of that, it's going to stick way too far out of the uh, the ceiling where the sheetrock is. So there's different ways to accomplish that. The first way is to put blocking between uh, these rafters. Now this is a 16 inch or about a 41 inch centimeter on center rafter. If it was 24 inches, then we'd use a larger ladder block here. The problem is, if I just mount it like this and then put this here, it's not going to be uh, proud enough that when the drywall is put in beside it, that this is at the right, uh, it's not flush to the ceiling surface. So what you would do is raise this to where it's approximately, oh, about an inch. Um, and so what I do is I just put a couple blocks under here uh, just for demonstration purposes. And these are about 12 millimeter half inch blocks. So that gives us about 24 um, cent uh, millimeters there. Now you can see when that box is put here, it's about the right height for that half inch or 12 millimeter uh, drywall to be put in here. That allows you to place this back and forth where you need it, and by moving the block up and down, uh, now you can put this exactly where you need it, where you desire to be in the room. Now, there's a real temptation, just take some sheetrock screws and screw this to the block and then call it good, but sheetrock screws are hardened, they're a little bit brittle. I would use pan head screws that have a flat bottom to the head that really bear well to the back of the box and secure it exactly where it needs to be. We'll come back and look at the box a little bit more uh, here in a few minutes. Now there's another device that's out here, and this is what's called a pancake box because it's so thin here and the space to do the wiring and to run in the wire and the power supply is here. And if your joist rafter or truss bottom cord happens to be in the position where you want your ceiling fan, these simply get mounted on the side like that. And again, secured with screws that have flat under bottoms of the head to really get this where it needs to be. So you can move this up and down and place it where it needs to be. So that's another approach. The third approach is to use one of these type of devices. Now these happen to be from Home Depot. You can get them from other major hardware chains. You can go on Amazon. And if you look in the description below, I actually have the links where you can download these. But let's take a look and see what's included in the box. So what you have is this same box. It's the same exact box, but it's got some mounting hardware. And what you're going to do here is these spread back and forth and you would simply place this where you want it, affix it over here. We would take the spacers off and all that and you're gonna drive screws into it. And now this can be slid back and forth by untightening in that. And we'll show you that real quick. 
Okay, let's go ahead and set this up as though we're gonna install it. Now this cover on the top is not a functional cover. It's simply to protect the box while drywall, mudding, painting's all being done, and it's just thin sheet metal. But let's go ahead and untighten this, remove it, and then what you'll find inside is what you're supplied with is um, a little instruction sheet, uh, the hardware to mount on the side here, and the Romex or the cord connector so that when you put the power supply through one of the knockouts, that's all secured properly. Okay, now the other thing you're gonna see is that there are two nuts right here, and those nuts are what hold the bracket on the back. So you just take a nut driver, untighten those slightly, now you can move this left and right and place it where you want. So let's suppose the position you want is right there. Now once that's there, you would just tighten the nuts again and you're ready to go. Now, the other thing you need to be very careful of is to use the right size nuts or excuse me, the um, screws here to hold the weight of the fan. So they're number 10 and you can use number eight for light fixtures and how that's accomplished is let me show you. Notice this little piece right there slides back and forth. There's a number eight, there's a number 10. Number 10s are used to do the ceiling fan, which we're talking about. All right, so now you know how this is done for new construction. Three approaches, direct mount on a louder block, a side saddle that goes just like this on the joist rafter or truss bottom cord, or this kind of device. What about if the work is already done and you're trying to retrofit and put a box in? Fortunately, there's a device for that as well. This kind of hardware is what you're gonna be using. This allows you, after a little bit of disassembly, to reach up through the hole, uh, spread this apart. So we're gonna put it to work here. Now, one thing that I wanna call out on this is the weight ratings of this kind of hardware, whether it's new or it is one of these remodels. If you are using the 20, the uh, 24 inch spacing right here, which is about 61 millimeters, uh, you're gonna be able to use up to 50 pounds, which is about 23 kilograms. If you're using the narrower spacing like this model is that we have here, 16 inches wide or 41 centimeters, or millimeters, excuse me, then what you've got is about 150 pounds or 68 kilograms is the maximum amount of weight that you're able to put onto these. Now in this particular case, when you open the box, what you're gonna get is this box mounted, which is just like the other ones we showed, but there is no courtesy cover, simply because you're doing a remodel. You're not doing new construction where there's drywall mud and paint and all that. So there's no cover. There is the cable connector right here. There's a set of instructions and this set of hardware, again, with the number 10 screws that you're gonna use to mount uh, ceiling fans with. Now, first thing we're gonna need to do to get this to work is to pull this box and bracket off. And we're just gonna use a 3 8 nut driver, which is about a nine millimeter uh, to remove this off and a Phillips drive to take those screws off. So let's get that removed. You can see they take this mounting very seriously. There's four connectors that hold this bracket. Go ahead and remove the bracket. And now this is set aside, of course. Now what we've done is reversed our model here and made this the backside so you see what happens here. Once this bar has all the other hardware removed, now it's time to insert it through the hole. So you would be underneath here and you would simply take this, reach up through the hole and let it set inside the cavity inside. So what you're seeing up here which is upside down. And this model is only screwed together with sheetrock, so I'm not gonna be able to pressure it completely. You're gonna just start turning this, and as you do, here I'm gonna spin it around so you can see, there's the screw there. So as I thread this out, then you can see this lengthen, and this will work all the way up to, as we said, that 24 or 61 millimeter spacing. But here we go, we're just gonna go ahead and screw this open. All right, now at this point, 
you're going to see that this is, has teeth on both sides. There's two things you need to be aware of. One, you need to hand tighten this. Do not use a wrench, but you want to make sure those teeth completely indent and grip. I won't be able to do that simply because it'll blow out the sheetrock screws right here, but you would tighten this by hand. The second thing is you need to make sure that these feet are oriented exactly like this. They're sitting like a tripod. And the reason for that, that's going to put the height of this bar exactly where it needs to be so that when you mount the box, it is flush with the outside over here of the drywall. When it's centered like this, again, I can't work from this side uh, unless I was up in the attic. What I'm going to do now is I'm taking this bracket and what I would do is put it up through the hole and put it on the side. If you try to put it up over the top, it's really hard. But if you put it on the side and then do one more rotation, you know, you can get it where you need it to be. So now it's there. And now I can take this box along with the hardware and remount it in here. Okay, now the box is pushed up tight against this, as you can see here. Now it's time to install the hardware again. All right, so now the box has been pushed up from underneath. Of course, you would have the knockout in here and have the cable securement device, the cable Romex connector right here so wire doesn't pull out. There's a grounding screw as well. Of course, use the number 10 screws to suspend a fan. And there, this is ready to go after you put all the hardware back in. It'll never come down. It'll support the fan securely. I have an electrician friend that told me he once went to work on the ceiling fan and found that the homeowner had simply mounted a clamp-on box suspended only by drywall and couldn't figure out why it was sagging and why the whole thing was vibrating. Don't be that guy. This is the great way to do it. We've shown you three or four great ways to secure... <laughs> Don't be that guy. Use one of these great approaches to make sure you put in a safe and secure mounting system. Here's something else you might be interested in. When it comes time to cut a hole in the ceiling, anywhere from two to seven inches, check out this tool that we reviewed, Milwaukee's adjustable hole cutter with a debris shield so the stuff doesn't fall on your face. And while you're at it, also check out this other video that YouTube and we think is perfect for you. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.